Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in as always. So I'm going to share with you guys a custom knife from a newer custom maker. And um, we'll go through the specs, overall impressions, you know, usual stuff. It is a little bit difficult though with some of these custom knives, of course, because, you know, uh, we're looking at a knife from Lorevo Knives, Jason Overall. And he does one-off builds. He'll modify um, a lot of the specs to customer requests, blade length, uh, materials, models, blade shapes. So, you know, this is one variation. Perhaps he'll make another one like this per customer request. Perhaps this will be the only one like this he ever makes. So, you know, we'll go through some of the basic specs, at least on this model, to give you guys an idea of what we're looking at. Um, so, here is Jason's contact information. Um, I actually met Jason at Blade Show last year, um, so, you know, just about a year ago now, and he said, hey, let's send something your way to check out, and, uh, you know, sometimes things take time. So, this is the Lateris model, and it's one of, I think, six models, one, two, three, four, five, six, one of seven models that he currently makes. Um, obviously, this particular one is done in a Tonto blade style. Um, it is a liner lock flipper, damasteel carbon fiber. Um, we'll go through it here in a second. So I guess we'll just start out with basic specs. Now, being that the knife is primarily covered in steel, you know, pocket clip backspace for this is going to be fairly heavy. So let's take a look at the weight on this one. Yeah, 6.52 ounces. So um, not a slouch by any means. And then some of the other basic specs. Take a look at the blade length here. Whoa, don't want millimeters. <clears throat> About 3.25, give or take, depending on where you want to measure it from. And then the handle length here is about oh, 4.8. So, uh, handle thickness. This one's actually fairly thick, 0.6 inches. And... I think those are the important specs for the most part here. Um, but size-wise, how are we doing against the para 2? Ah, hopefully, again, this continues to be a fairly good representation, but um, I want to say right in line with the para 2 by and large. Yeah, that's, that's pretty comparable. So that's what it looks like. Um, and again, the blade stock on this one is fairly thick maker's mark. Anyways, um, so what makes this a compelling option potentially? And, you know, the thing about Jason is that he does completely hand, you know, completely handmade custom knives. Um, we'll go through some of the things he will modify for you, but let's take a look at this one in person. So the Damasteel blade, kind of that Tonto shape. Um, this is actually one of the nicest etches I have, I think I've seen in a, a very long time or at least in recent memory. Um, you know, he basically polishes, does a very, very deep etch, and then he basically comes back over and, you know, buffs the top again to, you know, bring the polish back out. But it leaves just a fantastic contrast. Um, and it carries through to the bolsters here. But beautifully done. Very, very well done. You know, the, the grind, again, uh, freehand. Um, is very symmetric. The edge is nice and sharp. Um, it's you know it's it's really really well done. So um, yeah, I like that quite a bit. And the action, let's take a look at that, is fantastic. So he said it took a lot of trial and error to you know really dial his action and be consistent. But uh, he's done it. I mean, action on this one is phenomenal. Lockup is nice and strong here. So. Moving to the handle, zirconium pivot, um, which carries, again, the nice black right through, provides contrast, um, you know, just really nice detail. The blade sits completely in the handle on this model, and, you know, again, he'll modify the blade shape, assuming that it can fit in the handle properly, you know, it works with the design, so um, a lot of customization, you know, options available from him. Flipper tab is done incredibly well. Love the 45, love the jimping. I, I don't slip on it. I haven't had a misfire. Um, I think the flipper tab shape is actually quite important. And then the same really nice etch on the back spacer. Great contrast. Nice centered piece. So, um, you know, obviously he had to look through and find a piece that fit well. And then he had to, 
you know, cut it and grind it and so forth to bring out the pattern. The pocket clip is also damascus steel. So let's take a look at that. Works well in jeans, thank God. So let's take a look at the bolster transitions here. Really nice. Really, really nice. So let's take a look at the back. Even nicer. Um, you don't even feel the transition here on some of these pieces. So um, fit and finish overall is quite, quite good. Now this one is slightly off center. Um, I got it that way and I told Jason, he asked me to send it back immediately. And I was like, you know what? Um, don't have a ton of time. Let's just go ahead and run with it. But of course he would have that, you know, perfectly centered before shipping it to a customer. So um, does kind of a three hole cutout here for the lock bar internally. Well, I guess it would be external if it was a frame lock, but since it's a liner lock, we can call that internal. Um, yeah, so, you know, things things are very, very well done on, on this knife in particular. And, you know, let's talk about him as a maker, some of the materials he works with, some of the price specs. Um, you know, again, it's... Jason offers a level of customization that a lot of makers have stepped away with, or stepped away from, um, essentially. Because what happens is when you are making custom knives, you have to, essentially you have to try to bring down the cost per unit. You have to look for time saving, wherever you can find it. So a lot of custom makers these days, they will only work with maybe one or two models at a time. They will give you, um, you know, per potentially a few options to choose from in terms of blade steel or materials. Um, but they typically do not vary in terms of blade length. Um, or handle width or um, you know they won't go back to previous models and let you build um, perhaps a model you fell in love with because a lot of times they'll do you know batches they'll do runs um, they'll cut out handles for 10 knives in one design and, and they're not going back and doing individual builds because it's very time intensive um, you know economically what, what Jason's doing here is probably not the best option but as, as an enthusiast or as a collector um, this is what you want for most people for a custom maker is is to be able to have a lot of flexibility in the design um, lockup is what right around 50 percent no play uh, lock bars chamfered nicely really easy to disengage and no stick even if i flip that sucker hard there's just no stick so a lot of things are really well done on this model um i can't get in there it's um you know, the blade is recessed deep enough to where I'm not touching anything sharp, which is why the top there is just, you know, that portion there is unsharpened just because that's the portion you can touch and it's not sharp. So, anywho, um, jimping on the top is nicely done. And then again, there's that maker's mark. So, let's go through and talk about some of the customization options. And again, you know, I know this is kind of all over the place, but with custom makers, it's it's very much on a case-by-case -case basis for each knife. So, um, you know, as, as far as Jason goes, he's only been making knives since 2014. Um, you know, one of the perhaps Instagram makers we can call them since his business and everything is primarily done via Instagram. But, you know, Tail is all this time. He, he collected custom knives. Um, his father was actually into Randall knives when he was a kid. And he ran into the problem where he couldn't get on the books of certain custom makers. And he found that rather frustrating. So he decided, you know what, I can just make my own custom knives. And, you know, he basically bought quite a few of them, took them apart, tinkered, figured out what they were doing, and basically self-taught um, how to make custom knives. So no formal training, no apprenticeship, just him and his little, uh, what does he have? He has a little shop on his, uh, his property in Florida, not air-conditioned, so... God knows how he survives the summers out there, but he does it, and he's been doing it for a couple of years. So, you know, the, the problem, the fallacy is if, if you guys think that starting to make your own custom knives will mean that you can finally have the knives you want, you're absolutely wrong. I have not met a maker who can afford to keep their knives because the problem is that once you start making custom knives and people like them and they offer you money, uh, you know, it's like, hmm, I could keep this knife or I could sell it for 800 bucks and you know, pay bills or, you know, get my kids braces or crap like that. So um, if you don't make custom knives thinking that you're going to, 
ever really be able to keep any of your knives because I don't know any custom makers that really do. So, anywho, as far as pricing goes, um, it goes anywhere from, I guess, like $7.95 up to $1,700. This particular build, he told me, would be $16.50. So, you know, not inexpensive by any means, but when you look at how he's making knives and he makes them... Um, you know, he'll, he'll specify and he'll do custom orders exactly as the customer wants. Uh, that's, it's very expensive to operate that way. He's not doing the batch rents. He's not limiting his customers. And so, you know, the price reflects that. Now, let's see here. Some of the way that he operates his books, um, he'll only open them for six months worth of orders at a time. And then the books close until he works through those. And then he'll open up again to take in about six months worth of work. He doesn't want to have his books run longer than that. does go to the Blade Show uh, each year. Again, I met him there last year. Someday he'll go to the USN, but in 2018 he'll be at Table 11H. So, you know, Instagram is probably the best place to follow him. He does have a Facebook page, as most people do, but, you know, it's um, he doesn't post there too, too much. So, um, one of the other, <laughs> one of my favorite facts, though, he told me is that he will take cryptocurrency as payment for a knife. So if any of you guys have ill-gotten cryptocurrency, you try not to pay taxes on it. Perhaps you can, you know, funnel that his way for some custom knives. So um, one of the other things he'll do is if you want like a, a matching fixed blade to go with your folder, um, you know, you can request that of him and put it on your order. So, you know, right now he's only making around 60 to 70 knives per year. Um, so, you know, right around a little more than one a week, essentially. And that's what he's got going on for the most part. So, let's take a look at some of his, I guess, some of the materials he works with. Now, apparently my printer is running out of ink, which I just found out today. So, first world problems. Um, but a whole list of blade steels, dragon skin, sand my 35, CTS B90. I don't even know what that is. I haven't tried it. Um, a lot of different steels, base price. Um, so he's got a, a price list that you guys can go through if you really want to. Uh, he works with Juma. White Juma is one of my favorite materials. My carbon, carbon fiber, G10 wood. Some of the materials do require security deposits. Hopefully you guys who buy custom knives know that or are thinking about that. Um, certain materials are so expensive that you know the customer basically has to foot the bill to get them in the door. And sometimes when you work with custom makers, and this doesn't have anything to do with Jason, and I don't know what his policy is, but one of the things that can happen is if you request a material a maker has never worked with, um, they may tell you, hey, I'm willing to try, but if I screw up this piece of material, I'm not going to cover it. You know, it's like all, you know, it's at your risk as the customer. So again, I don't know what Jason's policy is, but it, I've seen I've seen that be a surprise to some people who were getting into custom knives for the first time that, um, you know, that makers can stipulate it's at your risk as the customer since I don't work with this material or, um, you know, meteorite or things like that. Um, that material is very fragile, very brittle. Um, if there's a void in some sort of material, the whole piece may, might need to be scrapped. Um, so anyways, food for thought, big picture. I should probably do a video on some of these uh, little things that can come up with custom knives uh, later on. But yeah, pretty extensive. Um, he'll get He'll get very, very... Um, granular in terms of his builds and um, one I asked him I said you know what makes you or your process or what's something you want people to know what makes you special and he said that it's really that he involves the customers as much as possible in the build process um, sends you pictures clarifies um, you know a lot of interaction while he's actually building it not in the weeks or months up to it but while he's building it there's gonna be a lot of interaction just to make sure you're happy and some of you guys might say, well, that's the norm. Well, no, it's not. As of last week, a friend of mine got in a knife that was completely the wrong order. And, you know, he was he had to decide if he was just going to stick with it or if he was going to return it and have to wait another year for a new knife. So, you know, again, doesn't apply to Jason, but food for thought for some of you guys, if, if you don't know anything about um, custom knives or the order process or some of those other things. So anyways, I think I think that's pretty much it. A beautiful piece, very, very well built. Love the action. The design is good. Um, balance is great in the hand. Uh, my wife liked this one quite a bit, actually. Um, she really, really liked the uh, Damasteel, and she liked the way it felt in the hand. So, 
Maybe I should incorporate more of what my wife thinks about some of these knives that come through. But anyways, um, not inexpensive, but hopefully I've kind of illustrated why that is the case as you go through and you look at some of his builds. Apparently he has a lot of repeat customers and if you guys are looking at custom makers, that's always a really good sign. So that should pretty much be it. You know, hopefully this was mostly informational. Put a new maker on your radar, show you guys a really cool custom piece that's, um, you know, it's got some fantastic details and finish work. Um, and yeah, more videos to come. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see more customs or less customs. As always, I do these videos for you, so your input is, of course, important. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.